Hello, everybody. How are you doing today? Happy Martin Luther King Day. Hey, Sunday. Hey, Sunday. Good to hear your voice. Good to hear your voice. I um, uh, want to make sure I am sharing my screen, too. Hopefully, everybody had a good day. The snow didn't hit like it was supposed to. <laughs> it was supposed to be really super cold, and it didn't uh, pan out that way today. Well, maybe for me, maybe for others it did. Hopefully you guys, uh, those who are up north, because I think um, I was just listening to CNN, Iowa's got, uh, was negative one. It's pretty bad. All right, let me make sure. Yeah, my, my mom uh, is not even going gambling, which is her thing now, okay? It was that cold in Pittsburgh. So <laughs> anything that stops her from going to the casino, you know, you it's, know cold. it's cold. <laughs> No, it's cold. That's good stuff. I love it. I love it. Ladies and gents, I'm super excited to be here. This is our first workshop and first training in 2024. Um, I am also broadcasting live inside of our Facebook group, and we are at the top of the hour, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, if uh, What I'm going to do is I should not um, have uh, uh, turned this on. I'm kind of new to what I'm trying to do here is I'd like to keep the comments in the Facebook group. So if you guys are not in the Facebook group, go ahead and get there. And I'm gonna actually be monitoring comments there because I know we've got sort of a dual type of thing going on. So forgive me if this is new to you. This is also new to me as well, trying to do uh, simultaneous broadcasting. All right, let's see if I uh, can still see you guys and still. All right, let me, I literally am trying to um, do the world. All right, so can you guys see my screen? Am I sharing anything yet? Let's try this. All right, can you see my screen? Yes. Yep. Yes. All right, perfect. Love the picture of Pearl, <laughs> Angela. Thank you. <laughs> love, love, love the picture of Pearl. Uh, Angela and I are both uh, grandmas. <laughs> I'm a Mimi. What are you, Angela? Are you a Mimi? What are, what are I'm you? A G I'm a Gigi. You're a Gigi. That's right. I remember it was very similar. Um, this time last year, we were in uh, um, Dubai. Not you and me, Angela, but another group of agents were in Dubai. And that subsequently, some of them have a returned. So I am happy to be here today with you all. And let me also make sure I said I'd have the Facebook group comments up and then there I go, not having it up. All right. So perfect. All right. So super excited to be here and welcome to our first workshop of 2024. Today, we're going to be talking about one of my favorite topics, which is the inquiry to booking. And many of you all struggle with this. So um, I was talking to a, an advisor uh, a couple of days ago, and uh, she was talking to me how she wanted to transition from fit to group. And what I will tell you is it doesn't matter, even if you are doing group uh, trips, this very well may still be applicable to you because you will still get custom requests. All right. So welcome, welcome. Hopefully your 2024 is kicking off to a great start. We are already on day 15 of chapter one of the new year and things are going to go rocket fast. I know this year because we've got a lot planned and this is our first installment. We are calling our installment series our sweet success because we really want to see you see success this year. Um, and so we start at the top of the process. And so who is this workshop for? This workshop is for any advisor who um, is really tired of dealing with tire kickers. Maybe you are focused on custom fit travel. If you're new to the industry and you're on here and you don't know what fit is, that just simply means individual custom. Somebody calls you up, uh, sends you a smoke signal or says, I want to go out of town and you start writing this is for you. If you are focused on group trips, however, you work with group leaders, this workshop is for you as well. So 
really what we want to be talking about and what we are going to be talking about the next five days is really how you go from somebody saying, I want to you giving them what they want <laughs> um, and getting paid for it, right? So we don't wanna just give everybody, uh, give and not get, right? So I am in for profit business. How many of you guys are in profit, are in business for profit? Like type in the comments, are you in business for profit? How many of you are not, are just doing this for fun? Because if you're doing this just for fun, this may not be for you because the, the, the activity that you need to be working on in your business, it isn't always fun. <laughs> so if you're doing this just for fun and you're really like, you just want to do travel as a hobby, this is totally not for you. This workshop's not for you. I mean, you're more, more than welcome to stay on, but this is for people who want to make money in this business. You're not necessarily focused on recruiting. You're focused on growing your book of business. You're growing your travel clients. You want to get as many people as you want to get out of town at a price point that makes sure that you smile at the end of the year or at the end of every trip or however you are measuring your success. All right, here's the opportunity. For those that are still with me and have decided to stay, if you're watching live on Facebook, um, uh, that's okay, register. You can register um, and get uh, the Zoom information, um, but I'm gonna be interacting from a chat perspective holistically on uh, Facebook because I do want that history to sort of be there with it and I don't have to worry about getting all of the notes and all that together. So if you have any comments, go ahead. I am gonna try and multitask and do this at the same time. Um, and so the opportunity that you have um, in 2024 is really make a decision about, do you want to make money doing this business or do you not? <laughs> like, if you don't want to make money again, this is not the right workshop for you because we're going to be talking about how to make money and uh, make the most of it um, in the five days that we're uh, together. But really the opportunity that you have is if you're already taking or you're already doing fits and you're already taking inquiries and you find yourself struggling to get the booking, then this is the opportunity for you. How many of you out there are struggling with converting requests into bookings? Like how many of you guys are struggling with that? Like people will call you up and you'll do the quote and you don't get the booking. And that happens more times than not. How many of you guys have decided to charge a planning fee? I call it a design fee. Most, some people call it a planning fee. How many of you guys have decided to do it but when you do it, you don't do it consistently or you feel like people like they run away. <laughs> they don't they don't buy. They're not excited or or maybe they maybe you do charge and they still ghost you. Like how many of you guys are experiencing that? And if you are chatting in the Zoom, let me know. Please, please, please go to the Facebook group if you are not in the group. Um, uh, people are ghosting you. Um, and I should, next time I will shut the Zoom chat down. So I'm going to see if I can do that now. I'm going to pause just a second. I need you to be in the Facebook group because I want these comments to live there. So, but many of the people on the Zoom call are saying, yes, that's me. You're not charging. People are ghosting you and it's just not working the way that you intended. I'm going to tell you just a little bit of a story. When I first started in the travel business, I didn't charge any fees at all. I um, just, I was so excited. I just started like taking quotes. I started just doing as many quotes as I possibly can. That really got old very quickly. And then I, I, I was recruited by uh, one of the host agencies that, um, uh, that um, have the, that recruit, right? And so I'm trying not to like, you know, try to be politically correct. And um, so I went to my upline and I was like, nobody is like, char you know, nobody is like converting. And she's like, you need to charge a fee. And I was like, well, what do I charge? And she's like, well, she didn't even tell me I need to charge. She was like, you need to just charge. Uh, she goes, I charge $25 per person. And I was like, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to charge $25 per person. That quickly got old because I charged $25 my first, it was like my second client I charged $25 for. And it was this lady and she wanted to do a destination wedding. It was a friend of a friend and they wanted to do a destination wedding. And by, you know, seven 
iterations later, still no decision. I was like, I am never doing that again because I didn't have any parameters around my service. I was just like, you need to pay me 50 bucks. And of course she knew she was very indecisive. And I mean, it literally, I mean, I must have done at least seven, uh, seven proposals, like, you know, came back to her and showed her seven different options and she still did it book. They ended up eloping ultimately I have two kids now, but the point is, is that I wasted a significant amount of time and $50 was so not worth it. So, um, the opportunity that you have today, ladies and ladies, and if there are any gents, ladies and gents is really make some shifts. And so let's talk about what that looks like. But before I jump in, I do want to let you know, I am not going to really spend a lot of time talking to you all about like, there is going to be an offer at the end of this five days. So I'm going to be totally transparent, but I do want you guys to take advantage of this because we are going to be talking about the software all the way throughout. You should have gotten an email for our free uh, trial of Travel Pro Suite basics, but here's what you're going to get. And I just want to make sure that you guys are aware you guys are going to get all of the setup that we're going to talk about if you sign up for the free trial. You're going to get free account setup. You're going to get a fast action call with me. And then you're going to get the travel request process that we're going to be talking about this week. You're going to get that done for you set up inside of your account. And then you're also going to master class that's going to talk to you about how to customize that. You need this software if you're going to kind of follow along. Do you need to have the software to implement the principles? Absolutely not. However, if you want to implement the principles with less fuss and must, try the software out. We're going to also be in a Facebook group doing that. So I'm just going to plug that. Go to onlinetravelboss.com sweet success trial. I have misspelled success. So um, I think I think I may have fixed that. So it may be one. No, actually, this one works. So this is sweet success trial. And then you'll be able to get your login. We'll get you all set up and then you'll actually be able to implement all week as you go. All right. So here's the problems that we've talked about is you've got no requests, right? I mean, you've got requests, but maybe you're not getting booking. Some of you guys have already said that. You've got, some of you may not even be getting requests at all. Like how many of you guys out there are not getting requests at all? Like it's like crickets out there for you in your travel business. Nobody's like asking, like, you know, maybe you launched and your friends and family are kind of done with you and you're not getting any requests. Like how many of, how many of you guys are experiencing that? Right. The other thing is, is that, um, I'm going to actually take my, um, take my face off the screen so I can actually like turn around and look at that part. <laughs> uh, multitasking is always so very difficult for me. All right. So no requests, maybe, maybe when you do actually talk to people and you get the, you, you, you do the proposal, you've got clients tell you they don't have money. Wouldn't it be nice to know that before you did all the work, right? Like no upfront that they're not, like they don't have the funds to pay for your deposit. They don't have the funds to actually go on the trips that you actually design. Wouldn't it be great to know that before you did the work, particularly if you're not charging for your design uh, services up front? Wouldn't it be nice to know that the client didn't have the money up front? Like, I would like to know that. I'd like to know up front if the person is prepared to pay my $500 plus deposit now than to find out after I've done two or three days of research, designing them a custom trip that meets every one of their desires and needs, right? I don't want them telling me at the end that they don't have the money, right? So are there other problems that you guys are experiencing? Let me know in the comments because I want to know what you guys, but you know, I've been working with you all for some years now and I have heard it all, but primarily these are the top three gripes that I get from travel advisors is you know, they're getting, they're getting, they're getting requests, they do the work and then the people ghost them countless stories of you advisors telling me how people have, um, you know, that you've, you've given, you've done the design and then the person tells you no, and then you see on their timeline that they're going on the very trip that you've given them, right? That would really tick me off. And it had ticked me off in the past. However, you know, for me, I already shared a little bit of my story 
But the reality is, is many of you guys, unless you were already trained by a coach or you had some inside knowledge, many of you all began the same way I did, right? You started booking, you started taking quotes, you started booking and you started working with anybody who would listen to you and anybody who would work with you, right? Is that your story? Because that's my story. When I started, I was, I took as many, you know, again, I was recruited. I don't know if you were recruited, but I was recruited into the business and I didn't know a thing about travel. I didn't know a thing about how to book hook or anything when it came to travel. I had a business, but I didn't know how to take that, uh, that previous business experience and apply it to travel. So what I found myself doing was wasting a lot of time spinning my wheels, not really accomplishing what I wanted, which is one, to get myself out of town and two, to get other people out of town and make all this money that people, uh, the person who recruited me told me. They told me I could get out of town for free and my family, I could get them out of town for free and I could make money booking other people. And I didn't see any of that for multiple years for multiple years. Like <laughs> it took me a, a while to put the pieces together. And so what I want to tell you is is that there is an alternative way. You don't have to keep you don't have to keep running on this hamster wheel. That's the purpose of this workshop. That is the reason why I created this workshop. Um, and what I can tell you is is when you stop the spin and you make a decision, because it's really not the people, you know, I was really fearful in the beginning when I started making these sort of changes in my business. I was fearful that people would like, they wouldn't, they wouldn't pay my fee. They wouldn't want to book with me. They would just roll their eyes at me when I, like, I had all these like hidden fears about how I would be received when I started changing my process. But what I discovered when I worked with the right person, I didn't get any of that pushback. I didn't he get any of, you, you said you hear double Sunday talking. Oh, that's probably because your Facebook, you need to mute one of your, mute your Facebook channel since you're in the zoom. So mute your Facebook, mute your site. <laughs> you hear me double time. That's because I am in speaker. <laughs> um, so what I realized is when I was working, when I actually worked with the person that was my ideal client, they were elated to pay my fee and they were elated to work with me. There was never any pushback. And that is a good feeling. Like how many of you guys have worked with the perfect client? Like the client that's like, yeah, whatever, whatever you charge, just tell me, just, just take care of it. <laughs> like, just take care of it. Like those are the, per now don't get me wrong. I don't want the client that says take care of it and they're not engaged, right? They take forever to respond. Like the perfect client for me is somebody who's at my price point, who will pay my fee and is ready to move forward. Um, you know, <clears throat> And when I work with that client, it makes me like happy to, it just makes me happy. It puts a smile on my face. I don't have a problem doing the design. I just like everything is, everything is right in the world. So the workshop this week is all about working with more perfect clients, right? Not working with those clients that you're like, oh my God, I wish you would go away. Those kind of clients are the ones that we want to get away from. So when I was feeling at the top of my frustration, I was like, I had a couple, I had like three options. I was like, I could quit because I was really doing a bunch of things. I was working a full-time job. I had another business. I think I was starting the online coaching business and we, we had a barbershop. Like I was doing way too much. So I was like, I'm just going to quit. I was like, but I want to do travel. Like, so I couldn't quit. So that really wasn't an option for me. So like I mentioned, I started charging a low um, planning fee, hoping that that would uh, repel tire kickers. Um, and then that didn't work for me either. And then because I was still getting people who were wasting my time and my time was very precious. Like I said, I had a full-time job. I was starting a, a, an online coaching business and I had another business. We had a barber shop and I have three kids, right? So I was running a lot of stuff. So trying to work with travel clients even though I was charging them fifty dollars, uh, you know, a a service fee, it didn't repel the tire kickers. Like, because I think if people know you and they know that you like do good work, 
paying 50 bucks is really not a way like fine i'll pay her a little 50 dollars and that's no big deal right right it still wasn't enough so what i ultimately had to do was create i had to really change my entire approach like i literally stopped booking travel for a period and really looked at how I was showing up, how I was attracting people and what I needed to do. So it really was a radical change in my approach was the option that I ultimately went with. And so before we jump in to the business model, if you are new to me, my name is Sunday Gardner. I am um, the business coach and founder of the Online Travel Boss School for Travel Pros. And my focus is on training travel advisors on avoiding the same pitfalls that I uh, went through in my own travel business and starting my own travel business so that you can avoid those pitfalls and um, show up. So one of the first radical changes I had to really take a look at was my business model. When I started in my business, I didn't have a model really defined. I just wanted to travel, right? How many of you guys have a defined business model, you know, the types of pricing you want to charge, and you know, the kind of clients you want to charge. Right. And so this was the, the, the model shift I had to make. And so this is sort of, I'm a big, big matrix kind of person. Right. So on the right hand, on the left hand side, you know, I always get my left and right mixed up on the left hand side is price. Right. And so you have a choice to be a high ticket price, right? So you have an average ticket price that you want to charge your travel clients at. And when I say high, I'm talking anything over the 3K mark, right? Anything that's going to be 3K and above, that's going to be what I would consider a high ticket. Now, some people may argue $1,000 is high ticket, right? But in the travel business, 3000 is actually really low because if you're with a host agency and you, you know, let's say you're at a 80-20 split and, you know, after your take home, that's really about between 10 and 12 percent commission. That's really only about 300 and some odd dollars per trip. Right. So high price. And I'm talking about gross sales like the trip cost is high price. Right. Are, where are you on the price model, on the pricing side? Are you high or are you low ticket? Uh, what was the website for the previous slide? Which slide would that be? Uh, for the trial, it's going to be online travelboss.com forward slash success, six, sweet success trial. All right. Are you on the high price or are you on the low price? Right. I'm going to give you an example of a low price. If you're selling carnival cruises and you're selling inside cabins, you're on the low side. <laughs> if you were selling, if you're selling, if you're selling, yeah, you're like, like and, and, I'm, and it's not to slight carnival. I love carnival. Like, I think it's a fun ship. I think it's a fun, fun ride. Right. But if your average ticket price is you're selling trips at like $1,500, $1,500 or $2,000, that means your commission is low. You're on the low end, right? So the first thing that you need to do is where are you on the price side? Are you high ticket or are you low ticket? Figure that out. Like, let, let's get some comments in that. Where are you on the pricing model? Then the second model item that you've got to determine is, how many clients do you want to work with, right? When I tell, when I started in this business, I, I had a full-time job. I had three kids. I had, you know, I was starting another business. I didn't have a lot of time. I didn't want to work with a lot of people. Now, I, when I first started back in 2016, I had found, you know, cause I'm a big researcher. So I found like other people who were doing what I was doing and I was looking at their, um, their, their model and they were doing group trips. And I was like, I want to do group trips. And then I was like, oh my God, like, you know, so then I was looking at group trips and then I'm like, oh, they got like 40, 50 people on their group trip. That sounds fun. <laughs> and then I was like, yeah, yeah. Like if you've ever done a group trip with 40, 50 people, that's a, that is a lot of work, right? So even if you're doing groups and you're doing low ticket groups and you're doing high volume, getting 40, 50 people on a group trip and then coordinating them while you, while they're out of town, 
that's a lot of work. It's not as easy as people say. So question number two for you from a business model perspective is how many clients do you want to work with in a given quarter, given month, given ticket? What do you want to work with in terms of your volume of clients? I don't have a lot of time. I don't really, I love people, not so much though, right? <laughs> it's funny because I do like people, but like I am kind of becoming an introvert the older I get, right? So I want to work with choice clients. Like I want to work with a less, less number of clients who can afford my services and products that I offer. Um, because what I find is higher ticket clients are usually less problems. You would think it would be the other way around, but it really is that higher ticket clients don't give me the same kind of problems that lower ticket clients do. Right. So that's just a proven fact. Like they're like, I've read like some studies on that. Like it's just a proven fact. So my choice is high price, low volume, right? What's your choice? This is one of the biggest shifts that I had to make was making a decision up front. The price that I want to charge my clients, right? So when I do travel, I want to be at a particular threshold of price point and I want to work with a choice few. So that means when I made that decision, there were some radical changes that I need to make to match that, right? So if you are on the flip side of that, you're low price and you, in order to make your numbers, you need to be high volume. There may be some shifts that you need to make accordingly, right? Every process does not match the model. So it's very important throughout this week that you understand which model that you are in. The model that we're focused on this week is high price, low volume. The processes that we're going to talk about are catered to a high price, low volume market. If you want to be low price, high volume, you're more than welcome to stay don't think there's any problem with you staying, but I'm going to tell you that the strategies that I'm going to be talking about this week are not going to necessarily be applicable or nor do you want to invest in the types of things that I'm talking about if you're low price, high volume, because it doesn't financially doesn't make sense, nor does it make sense for time. Let me give you an example. If you are low price, let's say you specialize in carnival sales and you want to do 1500, you know, large group trips on carnival and that's your stick, right? That's the thing that you want. I absolutely do not recommend that you take inquiry forms for that. You need to create sales pages and you need to just go on, <laughs> like go on about yourself. Do not like do inquiry forms. What are you doing in inquiry forms? Like, what are you reviewing? Why are you stopping the machine to do that, right? You, it's hard to spread yourself that thin when you're dealing with a lot of people. I wanna be able to create processes that are gonna allow me to get people done in a lot. So maybe your idea is to focus just on groups where you are just, you are selling the heck out of groups. You are promoting that. That means you probably need to have a lot of volume of groups, right? So I just wanna give you that context. The first decision that you guys need to make today is the business model. This workshop is focused on the high price, low volume business model. All right. Where are you all? So some of you guys are posting in the Facebook group. Let me look. You know, I've got a lot of people. I've got some people who are saying I would love to be high price, low volume. Um, my choice is high price, low volume. The current situation is low price, high volume, right? And many of you guys may be in that low, low price, high volume situation. And if you are and you want to make this shift, then my recommendation is to stay on if you want to shift from low price to high price, right? Because it does require a shift in the way that you operate and show up in your business. If I'm low price, again, I'm doing things a lot different. My marketing language is a lot different. The way that I uh, show up in the show up in the, in the uh, to my community is going to be different. I'm going to be talking about deals. I'm going to be talking, right? But when I'm high priced, I'm not talking about deals. I'm talking about experiences. I'm talking differently. So it's going to be really important, even if you are, you are low price now, but if your desire is to be high price, low volume, right? Stick with me. And through the, through this week, we're going to talk about how you can make those shifts and the types of things that you need to be doing to make the right shifts. All right. 
All right. So for me, like I mentioned, the high ticket path was the solution. I wanted to work with less people. I didn't want to do giant volume of people I actually did the numbers. I recorded this training many, many years ago, which was like, how do you actually calculate if you want to be a six figure business owner in your travel business, given the fact that you have no service income coming into the business and you're only relying on commission sales, the kind of volume you need to do in your travel business. It's a lot of volume. And I was like, I, yeah, like just the, the, the reality is if you are with a host agency and you, your margin, your commission is 10 to 12%, you need to be doing a million in sales to make six figures. That's just the number like that. That just works. Right. And so when you take your average, your average ticket price, right. So I'm sort of, maybe your eyes are crossed when I'm talking about these numbers, but the idea is I was like, I don't, I don't, I don't want to do a lot of people. Like I just like to make six figures, like the number of people I needed to work with was, it was a ridiculous amount of people. It's like, it, I required a whole team. I just didn't like, I couldn't do it given the amount of time that I had designing trips takes time. And I knew that I wanted to do custom trips and I wasn't prepared to do group trips. So I was like, I, the, the high ticket path was the only solution for me. I was like, I got to increase my average ticket price. I need to sell higher end trips and I need to sell it to less people. So that was the path that I needed to get on. And so what that meant for me is that I needed to make some shifts in the way that I did things. I like seriously had to shift everything. I had to, I had to systematize my process because again, I had a small amount of time to work with people. If I wanted to work with people, I didn't have time to work with a bunch of people who wanted quotes and weren't really serious about moving forward. So I had to system, I had to remove myself out of the process. And what I mean by that, and I'll talk a little bit about that is I'm a softy. Like how many of you guys are softy? How many of you guys have a process, but you don't follow it because somebody calls you up and you're like, you know what? I'm just going to take your information. I don't want you to fill out a form. No problem. Let me just take it right there. Right. And I'm, I'm already on the phone. Let me not waste any time. Right. So I, I'm that person. I'm that person that creates the process and will break it when I'm talking to somebody. So I had to, I had to stop it. Like I had to get out of my own way. And so I had to systematize it and remove myself at, as, as often as I possibly could in the process. So that was shift number one. Shift number two is I didn't want to work with everybody. I immediately stopped working with friends and family. <laughs> like I immediately crossed up, like they would, they see me on Facebook and they would say, Hey, you know, Sunday, are you still doing the travel thing? I'm like, yes. And then I would send them to my process. Like I wouldn't even like let anything else come out because I didn't want to work with everybody. So I immediately had to choose my perfect client and qualify them. And then I had to develop a service model that was really focused on providing services for clients instead of worrying about the transaction. So let's dive into what each one of those things mean. And, you know, some of you guys have said guilty me, like I am the worst at that. Like, I don't know about you guys, but I am totally the worst at uh, not following the process. Right. So that is why, particularly at the top of the process, I've got to remove myself. Like, I don't want to talk to people um, until somehow they call it. So like when random people will show up in my inbox and I ask them how they heard about me and they haven't they haven't seen me on YouTube. They have, they've, they've not joined my Facebook group. I'm, I am trying to get them into my funnel. I am trying to get them into my, into my web because that's where it happens. That's where the magic happens. So let's talk, let's talk about that. So if you raise your hand and you're guilty of not following your own process, then this is going to this, I am directly speaking to you guys. All right. So here's the goal. Right. If you want high ticket, you want high price, you want to sell high, high price luxury travel, right, with low volume, then your goal, ladies and gentlemen, is to have more meaningful, not just any kind of conversation, but meaningful qual conversation with qualified travel prospects. So how do you do that, right? Because the words that are bolded are the key. You want to ensure that the people that you're talking to, that they're qualified 
to be having conversations with you. And there is a way to do that in a way that you don't have to make these sort of micro decisions, right? Well, do they have the money, right? Do they really want to work with me, right? So let's talk about that. So the process that I want you all to really be thinking through all this week is the guidelines, is the process needs to improve what you're doing today. It should not be, if what you're doing today is not working, stop doing it. I don't want you, are you all there? Like, I, I just love when Facebook, uh, I've got this, uh, <laughs> got this thing. Is my slides show still showing? Is it still showing? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> um, you want the process to improve on what you're doing today. You want to eliminate some stuff. So we're talking about that and you want to automate some stuff. So we want to improve some stuff, eliminate some stuff and automate some stuff. So let's talk about what that looks like. So the key thing that I wanted to happen in my process was I wanted the process to automatically qualify people, right? I didn't want to work with people who were tire kickers or who didn't have the money or they didn't really want like to work with me. <laughs> they wanted, they didn't really want to do, they really want budget. They don't want luxury travel. Like I wanted I wanted the process to help the qualification process. Like I wanted it to help self-qualify people. I wanted the process to also help me confirm that I'm speaking to the right people, right? I didn't want, I didn't want to, like, I didn't want to have to, like, I wanted the process to know, like, to help me confirm, because again, I'm my worst enemy. So if I, if I, if I know I've got to confirm that somebody is qualified, I wanted the process to help me do that in a way that didn't make it complicated for me. I wanted to um, help improve my decision-making ability. I wanted to not have to, like, I make a, like, <laughs> the human person per day makes like thousands of micro decisions a day. I wanted to, like, <laughs> this is also in my eliminate thing. I didn't want to have to make all of these. I wanted the process to help with this decision making. I wanted it to help me close more people. Like, I didn't want it to just, like, I didn't want to just take in more requests and I'm still not closing anybody, right? That that would still suck. Like, I didn't want to get a lot of people and then not close more people. Like, I wanted the process to help me do that. And I also wanted the process to help minimize my risk exposure. And when I mean risk exposure is, you know, some of the things like, and I, I've had this, I, and I'm going to give you an example of risk exposure is like, if your process for like getting somebody to book doesn't include a credit card authorization, um, like an actual credit card authorization, you're exposing yourself to risk chargebacks and that kind of stuff, right? So I wanted the process to help facilitate the way I manage risk in my business and make sure that I'm compliant. So down the line, there wasn't any process. So I had a, a lot of criteria in developing a process. So I wanted all of these things to improve. How many of you guys want all of these things in your processes when it comes to taking inquiries and bookings to improve? How many of you guys want that in your, in your um, process to improve? I wanted to eliminate unnecessary decisions. I didn't want to have to make as many decisions as I was having to make in my business every single time I interacted with somebody. I wanted some of these decisions to happen already, right? The system make the decision, it just happened and it go away. I wanted to reduce steps and save time, right? The only way to reduce, the only way to save time um, in a process is to eliminate steps. Adding more steps isn't going to save you time. It's just going to add more time. There is no way to reduce the step, uh, to reduce time it takes to do a thing unless you eliminate steps. And so I also wanted to eliminate unnecessary touch points, meaning I didn't want to have to keep calling clients because I missed information. I didn't want to have to keep messaging people unnecessarily. I only wanted to have a meaningful touch points at the right time 
with clients when necessary. Does that make sense? Like those were things that were really important for me to eliminate because I was spending a lot of time in messenger, having messenger conversations, just gathering information that if I had a better form, a better intake process, I could have eliminated that, right? If I had talked to the person and asked some qualifying questions, I could have eliminated that. So that, that was really important to me in the development of a process. And then I wanted to, I wanted to automate as much as possible. You know, a lot of us will prematurely automate stuff based on the word automation, but like I wanted to absolutely eliminate sending emails and SMS messages, manually having to do that. I wanted to eliminate performing tasks that want, that I, I, I didn't need to perform. Like if it, like if I had to move something from stage one to stage two, like couldn't the system do that for me? Like it knows the action. Why can't it happen? Right. I wanted to like automate micro decisions. Right. So if somebody doesn't fill out, let's say they don't fill out the, um, uh, they don't, they don't book my, my, um, discovery call. Do I still like, do I like, do I still want to meet with them? Well, no, I don't like, cause that's part of my process. Right. So I don't want to have to make the decision to meet with you. You just automatically get an email and it just all happens. Right. I wanted to automate the gathering and sending of information. Like I always needed to gather birthday and this information, right. I wanted to consistently gather and send information to clients in a consistent way. So I wanted to automate as much as I possibly could. So that's what I did. <laughs> so I created the travel request blueprint. Many of you guys have seen this. Many of you guys have actually um, uh, last year, I um, not last year, actually in 2022, I released this blueprint for travel joy and implemented it in travel joy. And this really is the process that I developed in order to help automate or not even automate, systematize the way that we take in inquiries, charge a fee and get the booking, right? So that's what this blueprint is. But you know what, last year, man, I even, I even did one better. So I took it from travel joy and I, I automated as much as I possibly could, not only in Travel Joy, but also in Travel Pro Suite. So that's where you're gonna really see that. And throughout this week, I'm gonna show you how we do that. So these are the six steps. And let's talk about accepting inquiries. I wanted to standardize the way I collected data. I was inconsistently, how many of you guys like, you take the requirements over the phone, you take your client requirements over the phone. Every single time I don't have somebody fill out a form, I miss something. I and I've been doing this for years. I literally miss something. It's funny because last year, my dad, he, um, him and his wife, they were like, okay, we want you to, it's so funny. He just sent me money. He's like, here's your fee Sunday. He just sent me money. My dad's so sweet. He sent me money. Like he sent me a big check. I was like, oh yeah, dad, I'll, I'll do her. And they're doing a 70 year, a seven, he started in 70 and they're celebrating 34 years. And I almost didn't, I almost didn't give them the, the form. I almost didn't make them go through the process because well, it's my dad. He never told me it was his 70th birthday, nor did he tell, I mean, I should have known, but I didn't know. And nor did he tell me it was their 31st anniversary. I discovered that because I made them fill out the form. So standardizing the data collection, doesn't matter who it is, do it all the time. Doesn't matter who it is, do it all the time. Because my dad, he's not real celebratory. Like they knew they wanted to go, but they didn't even invite us. They were just like, yeah, we want to go on a cruise. They're cruisers. They're like, we want to go on a cruise. They knew internally between the two of them that it was these big events, but they didn't even mention it to us, right? I wouldn't have known had I not had them go through my process. It was a great example. Like when I when I looked over their form and I was like, why didn't they say anything to me? Anyway, but require it of all people. That was the, the biggest thing for me is on accepting inquiries. That really is there is get the requirements Prepare yourself as best you can walking into your discovery call by getting the requirements, like make sure that you have the requirements. Don't let anybody skip it. Discovery. Number two is really about making sure that you meet with your clients. If you are high ticket, what I will tell you about high ticket uh, sales is, is that it's not likely that a stranger is going to spend $3,000 or more with you and not have met with you, 
right? Get their whole family out of town, friends and or family out of town, drop three plus thousand dollars, right? And it's probably 3,000 per person. So if it's two, it's six, you know, 6,000 plus $10,000 on a trip and not have met you, right? Now, that is why the discovery process is so important. It's not just also about the call, but it also gives you the opportunity to discover if you even want to work with this, right? Are they a bridezilla, <laughs> right? Or are they somebody that you actually want to work with? Are they decisive? Are they going to be able to make decisions? It's discovery on both ends. You want to make sure that you discover as much information about your client's trip, about your client, their ability to pay, their ability to move forward. You want to do all that up front before you do any work, right? So, and then it also gives you the opportunity to confirm with your client that you're the best person to do this job for them. Research and design, you guys, we're really not going to be focused on that this week, but you guys do this, right? You research, you want to make sure that you're working with established preferred suppliers, you're matching requirements to suppliers, you're getting multiple quotes from your suppliers, and that you're getting the best price point. This workshop is really not focused on the research and design part of the process, more so I assume that you guys know how to do this part. We're also not going to focus so much on the assembly, so defining, but what I will say is if you got the requirements, you're working with great suppliers, assembling the information into a proposal and or to a group booking page should be less work for you if you've done the requirements phase up, work, up front. So the standardization of the requirements, so accepting the inquiry, Having that discovery call makes these next two steps that we talked about, the research and design and assembly, much um, it should make, make it much easier for you to accomplish. Going too fast. <laughs> so we will be going over this and I will include the replay. We have a lot to go over this week. So pricing, um, this again is about profitability. How do you actually design trips that make sure that your bottom line is as, you know, as high as you possibly can, you know, even with your, if you're with a host, if you're independent, there's certainly some opportunity to ensure that you're profitable here. So again, our focus this week is going to be on step one and two, and then step three. So pricing is really an important thing um, to ensure that you have the right pricing model to ensure that you're profitable. But really, once you get all of that done, how do you showcase it? How do you close the deal? So you've gone from a discovery call, you've designed the trip, you've made sure it's profitable for you. How do you present and close it? Are you just sending them an email? Are you sending high ticket clients? You design a trip that's $6,000, $7,000, $8,000, and you don't have a follow-up call? You don't walk them through the amazing experience that you're about to have with them. There's an opportunity there for you to actually close the deal and not leave it to their devices. So this presentation that you do as a follow-up is another opportunity for you to sort of put the nail in the coffin, so to speak, and close that deal and make sure that you get that booking. So that's where we're going to focus on this week is shift one is Automate the process where you can. Make sure that you create a process, follow the process, and automate the system. <clears throat> Shift number two, stop trying to work with everybody. Like everybody's not your client, right? I want you guys to really think about who that perfect client is. And you probably have already worked with them in the past. Excuse me, I have to take some water. What did you like about them? What 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 are what are, what are the characteristics about the clients that you didn't like um, that you've worked with in the past, right? Your perfect client is is who is that person that you help get out of town and they how can we get that money? <laughs> yeah, yes, we definitely want to work with people that want to spend that money, but. I I actually don't want to work with everybody that wants to spend money because some of those people are, some people are crazy. <laughs> and I want to know that up front. Yes. So that's the reason yes. why, that is the reason why I meet with 
pretty much all of my ticket client, high ticket clients is because I want to know up front if you're cray cray, right? Just because you're willing to drop $10,000 doesn't make me that you're not going to drive me crazy in the process. So all money is not good money. And I want to know that. And if you're crazy, unfortunately, those cray cray tendencies will reveal themselves in the discovery call. All right. So here's some bad examples that a lot of advisors really focus on. They focus on the special, they, when, they, when they think about who they want to work with, they say, okay, I want to work with people who wanted to go on groups. I want to work with all-inclusive travel. Um, I want to, I want to work with, so, you know, like people who want to do solo travel, or I want to work with, you know, you're really focused on the travel type. And you're really not focused on the people. So these are not good People examples, right? What do you, what's missing in these examples? People. There's no reference to people. It's the type of travel. And many of you guys are focused on the type of travel that you specialize in, and you're not focused on people. But here, <clears throat> what I want you to find out is, or ask yourself is, the people that you want to work with, why can't they get themselves out of town? What's the underlying reason that they can't get themselves out of town? And if you tell me it's money, they're not the right people. <laughs> so money is not the reason that they can't get themselves out of town. There's something that's preventing them from getting themselves out of town. And once you identify that, that is the pay dirt, so to speak. That's the, that's the goal is understanding why your people can't get themselves out of town because then you can create good examples of who you wanna work with, right? So here's some examples. These are examples that I came up with is if I wanted to uh, focus on group travel, let's say, and I want to focus on sports travel, I want to help. I want to work with kids who I want to work with parents who are uh, uh, have kids in competitive teams. Right. Because I know that they go out of town a lot. I know that they probably don't have a lot of time to book their travel. Or maybe the coach is booking the travel. So maybe I really want to work with those coaches. Right. I can speak to that specific market and I can help them get out of town better, right? Does that make sense? Adventure travel, it's a type of travel, but I want to work, like actually had a client and this was her specialty. She wanted to work with uh, <laughs> client, uh, people who wanted to travel with their animals. She was an animal lover. She had dogs, like her entire channel was around traveling like in the United States, cross country with her dog. And there's a, an entire like <laughs> focus there's, there's special concerns that people who travel with animals need to have. So romance travel, people are always tell me, I like, yeah, I want to do romance travel. I want to do wedding travel. Right. But what kind of wedding, uh, everyone who's getting married doesn't necessarily want to work with you. What kind of uh, people who are getting married, do you want to work with? I definitely don't, if I were doing destination weddings, I don't want to work with just anybody getting married. I want to work with people who want to get married in a unique way, right? They want to do it in an untraditional way. They want to get out of town to get married, right? So when it comes to thinking about people, you want to think about people in terms of how you can help them get out of town better and focus on their needs, that is the, that will be the perfect client for you. Not just money, because a lot of people have money. We want to make sure that we've isolated specific markets of people. So the message for you really here is focus on people, not on travel. It sounds sort of counterintuitive, right? You think, well, I'm, I'm a travel agent. I should be focused on travel. Yes, you need to focus on travel. But when it comes to attracting and working with people, focus on the type of people that you want to work with. You want Lux, Lux, Lux. But what does Lux mean, right? What does, what does that mean when you want to work with people who have money? What does that mean? We want to identify specific characteristics about people so that we can call them out and we can attract them, get them to fill out our form, and then go through our process. So once we identify the people, then it becomes so much easier to attract them. What's common about all the examples is it's travel plus people. It's travel plus who we help. So when you guys think about who you want to work with, tell me in the comments, who are some of the types of people that you want to work with? How specific have you been or are you being when it comes to identifying your people? 
write in the comments, like, let me know, or you guys come off uh, mute and tell me. I'm going to take a sip of a drink because I am parched. Nobody wants to work with anybody? We have 50 people on here. You guys don't want to work with anybody? I want to work with people, <clears throat> excuse me, who know where they want to go. They understand value. They're not looking for a deal. They want an experience and they want, they trust that I know what I'm talking about once I start showing that I know what I'm talking about. And that aren't going to be um, calling me every day to see if I have a quote or asking me 10 million questions. These people are, they're well-traveled and they're just busy and they, they understand the service professional and they don't have a problem paying for convenience and um, experiences and values. That's what I want. I love that. I, I didn't see who was talking. Um, that's, that's Ricky. Oh, hey, Ricky. How are you doing? Um, I'm good. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Um, so people is pretty, pretty vague. That, that describes a lot of people. How will they know that you're the person for them? Like, what kind of people? And what are they doing that they're so busy? What kind of people are these people? <laughs> Probably executives or, yeah, go ahead. You want people that are avid about travel, regardless as to the situation. They're ready to spend the money. They're already, like she said, they already know where they want to go. These are people who are ready for the travel. They're ready for the experience. You don't have to chase the chase the sale necessarily. Understood. So the, the word people is still very vague. So I think, Ricky, you started to explain. Travelers. Can we just say travelers? No, you can't. No? You can't just say okay. travelers because there's, oh. a, there's, there's millions, billions of travelers, right? The the right. travel industry is a huge, huge industry of people who travel. There are billions of people that travel every year. Okay. So you've got to, as a small business owner, and this is the shift that is the most difficult mm -hmm. for new and seasoned travel advisors to make is you <laughs> cannot be vague when it comes to talking about the person that you want to work with. A traveler is very vague. People, the word, using the word people is very vague, right? You okay. are a small business. You do not have an unlimited, unless of course you do. I'm making some assumptions here and I shouldn't because it just makes, you know, what is assuming does, right? But I'm going to assume for most of the people that I've worked with. And so, and I'm talking specifically travel advisors that I've worked with over the years do not have an unlimited marketing budget. They do not have millions of dollars to spend to just throw their name out there and hope it sticks. <laughs> is, that, is that a fair statement for most of you all? Yep. Right? So if you don't yes. have millions of dollars to just throw your name out there, you need to be, you need to narrow down what that person or what those people are doing and who they are. Travelers in general is vague. People in general are vague, right? So when you release something out there on a, let's say you were to pay for ads, let's say you were on YouTube, right? You were all on these traffic sources. How will somebody stop and say, that's me? And then want to take the next move to then fill out your inquiry form. If you aren't specific enough to identify that you help them, the reason you all are here is because I help travel advisors. I'm very specific about my market, right? When I, when I work with travelers, I'm very specific about the fact that I work with retired military people, right? I'm very specific about the type of traveler that I wanna work with. So everything that I do from a marketing perspective is allowing that marketing piece to self-qualify them. Does that make sense? Yes. Hopefully that does. Travelers is very general. People is very general. So when it comes to who you want to work with, this is, again, the, the most difficult thing that people, that, and I'm, I'm using general terms, but travel advisors have a hard time with 
when they when people enroll in my program, this is the first thing that we work on is identifying who you want to work with. Single parent families, great. Love it, Donna. That is a great single parent families. Very specific. You know exactly who it is. Single parents have unique travel uh, issues, right? Busy families have very, uh, you know, those two may be opposed and there may be two different marketing messages. But again, the point here and the reason why I stay on this shift, because it is one of the hardest shifts for travel advisors to make, is because you want to work with everybody, right? You want to work with everybody who knows that your services are the bomb.com. The, the unfortunate part is that you've not done anything to really position yourself for that high ticket buyer for them to want to pull the trigger, right? You express to me your desires, but you're not speaking to them about their desires. Because frankly, that's all that matters. When it comes to marketing your travel business, that all, that's all that matters is that you can satisfy whatever that client has as their desire. A single parent, right? If I was focusing on single parents, I think Donna, you put that, if I was doing single parents and I wanted to focus on them, what what is what is one of their probably concerns about getting out of town it's probably money it's probably it's probably money can i afford it one of the other things is that is that 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 may be concerned for a single parent is well how do i create an experience that both me and my child i'm an adult and my child is there right can I create an experience that the my my kids can have a good time and I can have some adult time, right? That may be what the issue is. So the point is, is when it comes to this second shift is everybody, even if it's a luxury high ticket client is not your client, you've got to be focused on the client. A lot of the descriptions that you guys just gave me is focused on you, the advisor. <laughs> you've got to focus on the client. What does the client need to get them out of town? And what will they value to help them get out of town and the people that they love and care about get them out of town? How do you position your services to help them get out of town quicker, faster, and better? All right. So stop trying to work with the people. Let's get, let's get, let's get a specific person, types of people in mind when it comes And The types of people are really focused on what are they doing for a living? What keeps them up at night and keeps them from booking that, that amazing trip, right? Multi-generational is a, a client that I was working with and she specializes in multi-generational travel, right? And so, and her client base are busy uh, professionals and they, and she's working with the with the 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 lady who's responsible for elderly parents, her kids, and and getting that entire family of ten to twelve out of town. What's their concern? Their concern is I don't have time to get my 10, 12 people out of town, but I got to get them out of town, and I just I, I just want to work right. So the content that I'm going to develop is going to be very specialized to their concerns, right? So choose your perfect client, right? It's not characteristics about you as the advisor, but characteristics about the client that you've got to be able to call out. Once you can do that, everything it comes to positioning you as a travel advisor becomes so much easier when you nail this one down. Step three, I just sort of alluded to that, but we're going to talk a little bit more about that, which is how do you um, shift three is really about developing a client focused service model, not transaction. I'm not really focused on a um, making the transaction. I'm not really, believe it or not, I'm not really focused on the sale, right? I'm not just focused on the booking. I'm not just focused on collecting the fee. I'm really focused on the service, right? What is the service that I can provide that can help people get out of town quicker, faster, better, right? I'm going to charge for that service. I'm going to charge a lot for that service because I do do it well, right? You do do it well. And as long as I can qualify somebody, I confirm that I'm the right person to do it. I don't have a problem charging for it, right? That's the first sale. And then once I design that experience, because I know I design the heck out of experiences and create amazing experiences, then I'm going to then charge them again for that, for them to fulfill that experience, right? <clears throat> so let's talk about 
what you used to have to do. You used to have to just, you, like many of you guys who are charging, you're charging a very low fee, which is incongruent to a high ticket buyer. If you're charging zero to $25 or you're refunding fees, that really devalues the service that you provide. The service that you provide is a value and it should, you sh there should be a cost to it. Somebody who values time um, over money won't have a problem dropping $500, $200, whatever you charge, right? And, I, and I'm going to say this. I said this a couple of weeks ago in one of my lives, and I'm going to say it again. Whatever you charge for your service fee, for your planning, your design fee needs to make you smile, right? So that's, if, if $25 makes you smile, I can't imagine, I, like, I'm, I, I want you to tell me if that makes you smile, I want you to have a conversation with me independently. $25 for the amount of work it takes to design a trip, I don't even care if it's something I'm pulling out my bag. It doesn't make me smile. I want you to create a planning fee that makes you smile. So when you get that inquiry and somebody says, yes, you're smiling to do the work, right? Because that is a separate service than actually getting them out of town. Does that make sense? Like, I want you guys to also think of that, right? When it comes to high ticket sales, this, the first service that you're providing is not the booking. It's the actual design, particularly when it comes to custom custom fits it's the design is what is what you're charging designing a customized itinerary for that family that couple that person that's the service and there should be a fee associated with that right we used to be afraid to actually charge because we would lose business many of you guys charge out of anger <laughs> you're angry and you're like i'm going to charge because i'm tired of tire kickers so i'm going to charge and then you charge and then it, you still get the tire kickers so Here's why you need to charge. When you charge and when you charge an amount that makes you smile, not everybody else is going to smile accordingly, particularly those people that are not your perfect client, right? The people who are not your perfect client, when you tell them it's $250 plus for your planning fee, they're going to be like, that's too much money. And you're going to be like, that's great, right? You can, you can feel like you need to justify that. We're going to talk about that tomorrow, having those kinds of conversations in tomorrow's um, day. But it really does eliminate, it immediately self-qualifies people when you charge accordingly. When it, it, it immediately creates an additional stream of income, which you should already have as a part of your business model. But it attracts quality clients. Many of you may think, well, no, charging, it, it, it repels people. The right client who values experiences, values their time. It's not an issue, right? If you and, and let me tell you, I work with, I, I have been that that busy prof. I am still that busy professional, and planning trips takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of my time, um, and those who want to get and have amazing experiences value having an expert do it on their behalf. Get you should get compensated for the service that you provide upfront. I always and have been saying this for years, and I am still a firm believer, if you are on a commission based, you know, you're with the host agency, you're getting suppliers, what we make in income from the suppliers is between me and the suppliers and it is my relationship with them is the reason I'm making that that shouldn't have nothing to do with the service that I provide on the front end, or the management of the booking throughout, right? So this is why you need to charge. You got to have the right mindset though to charge. You need to stop thinking of yourself. And I, I really have been very conscientious of the, the term um, over the last several years. I, I really try not to even refer to you all as agents, really as travel professional as a, and as advisors, all right? You know, when I'm doing marketing, I have to say agents because you guys still refer to yourself as agents, but really you are professionals and you should charge accordingly. Any professional performing services has a professional fee associated with, as do you. It takes time. If you're in this business and you're not in it for hobby, the amount of effort and time that you take in honing your craft is a lot, right? going to supplier training, getting educated. You're spending five days with me this week just so that you can position your travel agency, travel, um, your travel agency uh, and get the expertise that you want. It's, it's valuable, right? So call yourself. I like travel concierge, Katisha. I love that, right? 
even what you call yourself matters. Don't worry about the nose and the do it yourself first, because that's not your perfect client. Unless of course it is. And again, if it is, you need a different way you show up. The process that you follow is going to be different. If you are catering to you, if I was doing, if I were going to cater to do it yourself first, I'd create a course. I'd create a course on how to get, how to, how to find budget deals. Right. And then I would sell that course to them for $197. And I would sell, I'd probably create a membership and have them buy the course and do a membership. If I was a travel advisor and I wanted to work with low ticket people, that's what I would do. Do it yourselfers. I want to attract as many do it yourselfers and I'd sell them a course. I would package up all my travel knowledge into a do it yourself course and sell that. People love courses. You have the opportunity here um, to not only do you know, if you're not even charging fees, like, so I'm talking standard fees, right? If you're doing airline only non-commissionable types of things, you should be charging a fee for that. I'm not even talking a design fee. You should be char charging a service fee for that. Look on, and, and the suppliers are doing it. Go buy a ticket and go buy a ticket from American Airlines or any airlines. And there is a fee that you're paying for them. You should be charging that as well. You should be charging for, uh, standard fees associated with non-design relative activities. And then you should consider your design fee a consulting type of fee. So really this is a shift from thinking of myself as a travel agent, which is a transaction. I take an order, I fulfill that order, I book it and that's it, right? That's what they can go to Expedia.com for. When they come to you, you should be providing consultative services and charging accordingly. So here are the types of fees that you have the opportunity to charge for, add a fee to your pricing, but these are standard. If you don't have this in your already, like as a part of your model, like, like take a screenshot of this. I'm gonna stop for a second. Take a screenshot of this and create a fee structure for this. $25, $15, I don't care what it is. If you're doing any of these things, you need to be charging service fees for this. This is not the same thing as a consultation fee, a planning fee, a design fee. This is separate. You should have a service fee model that covers for whatever you want to include in this. But these are some examples for service fees. But when it comes to okay. client focus, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I tried to take a screenshot and it. OK, hold on. Hold on. Jesus. I hate my phone. I hate it. I paid too much money for it. OK, here we go. All right. You're the best. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So when it comes to client focused services, you really need to be thinking about what is that consultation service that you provide, right? If you are high ticket, you're providing some sort. It's not that you're just going finding the highest price package, I hope. I hope you're doing more than that, right? You're not just going to go find a, a, a package that's going to be $10,000 and then go and give it to your client, right? You're matching their requirements to the resort, to what they've asked for, the needs that they have, right? That's a consultation and that service is needs to be client focused. So I really want you to think of this designing as a consultation service and it should be client focused. So this is to cover your time for research and planning, booking and managing your client's travel. This is why whatever you charge should make you smile. Does that make sense? Like, I really want you guys to put this together. Any event planning, any trip designing, any itinerary planning, any uh, custom trip planning that you're doing, any group trip planning that you're doing. And the last item that, um, hold on, let me see what that last item says. Uh, plan, oh, this is my favorite because this is the month. This is January. Um, sorry for that, that that was not uh, large enough for you guys to see, but the planned time off, that is a service fee that I created um, several years ago. And um, this month in January, we actually have a, a celebration day, which is plan your vacation day. And so I created the service fee, uh, the service called plan your year, your, your plan your year time off. And the idea around that, that that service is I will work with you, you pay a retainer type fee, and I will book all of your all of your trips for the year. That's a client focused 
people, and this is January, ladies and gentlemen, this is January, people that particularly if they are professionals, right, they're six-figure earners or greater, they probably have, they're older, they probably have anywhere to three to four weeks of vacation time, and maybe they don't take it all. Statistically speaking, over 50% of the people do not take 100% of their vacation every year. This plan time off service was a great service that I created, I actually created a whole course around it. But this is when it, when it comes to consultation fees that you have the opportunity to really position yourself with. So these are the three shifts that I needed to make in my travel business. These are the three shifts. If you really, if you want to go from low ticket to high tick, I recommend that you make in your travel business relative to how you show up. Really automate the system, take yourself out of the, the equation where it makes sense. The inquiry process makes sense to do it. Have everybody go through your process. Make sure that you are discovering as much information before you do the work. Conduct a call. Make sure you have a follow-up call. Make sure that you're designing and you're pricing according to profitability and that you're actually having a follow-up. Identify who you want to work with up front. Don't just because somebody does an inquiry and they look they all look good on paper, then you meet with them. And let's say you don't follow the process for your discovery call and you don't actually tell them up front what they need to be prepared to deposit and you go forward. And then you get mad that they, they, they ghosted you, right? It's because you didn't set the stage. Make sure that your people are the right people that you want to work with and try and do that up front by having a process that's going to qualify your perfect client. And then make sure you have services that are client focused and not just transactionally focused. So these are the three things that I'm gonna leave you with today that I want you to really be thinking about. You guys have answered some of these questions in terms of your business model, because all of this is really gonna set the stage for the rest of the week. So your business model, high ticket, low volume, low ticket, high volume. If you're a high ticket or you wanna to move to high ticket volume, make that decision and stick with it. Because again, it's going to require some shift. Who's your client? What do they look like? And I don't mean like physically look like. What, is, what does their day look like that prevents them from going on that dream trip? What's preventing them? Is it family? Is it friends? Is it job? Is it, is it time? Is it they don't have the knowledge? They whatever. What is that thing? And who are those people? Fee structure, what is that going to be? I want you guys, and I'm going to ask you guys who have just a couple of minutes, like ask right now in the comments, what are you, what are some numbers that make you happy in terms of charging for your consultation services? Right in the comments, what makes you smile? What would be the fee that makes you smile? 250 plus? Love it. 150, all right, 300, 250 plus, plus, plus. <laughs> Are you guys charging that now? Nope. Okay, charging 200. All right, so what I want you to do for those people who are saying, no, and they are giving a number that would make them smile today, make the decision that that's your new fee. Can you make that commitment to yourself? Today, January 15th, 2024, your new fee is the number that you wrote. And then today, this week, what you want to do is figure out how you can get comfortable with that. <laughs> like, how do you get comfortable? Because really the only thing that's stopping you from charging it is you. Katisha, you are not the only one. I remember when I went from 50 to 250, I was like, nobody's going to pay 250. <laughs> and it took, it took, it, it was all in my head and it's all in y'all's head too. And so what I want you, and so this is why I land on this third bullet in terms of fee structure is 
make the commitment, write it on paper. You've also wrote it here. We've got evidence that you wrote it here that your new number is this. We're gonna develop a process this week that makes takes you out of the equation for sending the invoice, takes you out of the equation. You just start, that is the number, all right? So your action today is maybe you need to decide on one of these bullets or all of these bullets, but at the end of the day, that's what I want you guys to walk away with tonight is making a decision on these three items because when we meet tomorrow, what we're gonna be doing is talking about the conversations, the meaningful conversations and the best way to do that. So I, I just sort of got ahead of myself. So sneak peek tomorrow, we're gonna be talking about conversations that convert. So there's two, there's, there's several conversations that you have along the way that help you really understand if somebody is the right person that you want to work with. So we're going to be talking about all of those different conversations that you can have before a discovery call, during the discovery call, in your follow-up call, but we're really going to be talking and focusing on the conversations, right? How many of you guys are scared about the conversations? Like I was definitely afraid. Like I didn't even want to have conversations. I wanted high ticket sales, but I didn't want to talk to anybody. I wanted people just to go to a site and buy. Like, are any of you guys that way too? Like I didn't want to have conversations. I was like, I want people just to buy my stuff and um, just like they buy my stuff and then that's it. Like I didn't want to have to meet with people, but the reality is if you're high ticket, you need to be meeting with people. And there's multiple ways to have those conversations. So that's what we're going to focus on tomorrow. And then I want to remind you, though, um, uh, if you uh, want to get our free trial of Travel Pro Suite, go ahead to onlinetravelboss.com forward slash suite success trial, because those people that sign up and get the free trial, we're actually doing a VIP right after this. So we're going to, I'm going to be staying on with our travel uh, pro suite, sweeters or our Opus members and talking to you all about your own custom process or any issues that you may be having um, with setup or anything else. I'm going to be inside of that Facebook group, but you're going to get a 30 day trial. Just as a reminder, free account setup. Um, Ricky, you are in, so you can stay absolutely free, fast action, one-on-one -on -one call with me to help you with that setup. We, you're going to get the, all of that process that we just talked about can be realized. Some major portions of that um, in the system, you're going to get that done for you set up as a part of your, um, your enrollment. And then you're also going to get a masterclass that's going to step you through how to personalize some portions of your request uh, flow right now. Uh, all right. So VIP room is starting in eight minutes. So I'm actually going to say goodbye to you all. I'm going to well, actually, let me give you guys a couple of minutes to ask some questions. If you have any questions, um, any questions? The trial after the trial is $97 a month for the tool. And Naomi, I saw your registration and actually have already created your account. So I know that you're in. So if you are in and you're in trial, you get the opportunity to join us in a Facebook group. And so I'm going to check to see if I've got any new members so I can make sure to let you all in. Any other questions? What's the website? So the website is onlinetravelboss.com forward slash sweet success trial. Let me, let me copy that in the, if I were a really good mass uh, multitasker, I would have um, had that in the chat for you. So I'm gonna put that in the chat in here and then I'm also gonna put it in the Facebook chat. Let me get to the Facebook group. How did you guys like this? How did this help you out? I'm learning a lot because I'm totally new at this and I've never had training. And the lady who signed me up to be a travel agent, she just kind of left me in the water. And it's kind of frustrating because when I see her online, she's recruiting other people and helping other people, but she's never helped me even when I came right out and asked her. 
So I'm here because I have a travel agency and I have access to travel pricing, but I don't know. It's like, I know what I'm doing, but I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how to really just get this business off the ground so that I can start working for myself. I want to stay home and book trips and travel. I don't want to go work and be a phlebotomy tech anymore. So that's my goal. I, I, I love the goal. And what I will say is I completely and totally understand because that was my story too. My upline didn't help me. I didn't. That's the reason why I created online travel boss. <laughs> that's the reason why I am here is because I love teaching and I love um, uh, all of that. And it, there are so many people who are in the same boat. Um, so I am not, um, I don't care what host agency you are with. My goal is to help you learn how to do this so that you can do what you love. Yeah. Yeah. So Ricky asked, have I done the Dubai fam trip for 2024? We are not going to Dubai in 2024. We are going to Dubai in 2025, next January. But I am about to release Bali, August 2024. So uh, Bali, I just finished it up. And if you get our trial, you'll see on my request page, I have a link to the Bali. I sort of have a soft link to that. I think so, I did um, do the trial. Yes. Say again? I think I did do the trial. Uh, if you did, I haven't seen it. I didn't see any uh, registrations like right about an hour. So I stopped uh, looking that. So if you did do the trial, um, and you just register for the trial, I'll get all your accounts uh, definitely uh, created and set up before tomorrow's class. All right, any other questions before I hop Sunday. off? And go Sunday question real quick. Sunday, where is for the next class? Did you send out a link or is no, it on Facebook? Actually, we're just gonna stay on here and then I'm gonna stop broadcasting it. Um, oh, okay. Facebook group and I'm gonna broadcast it to the other Facebook group. Thank you. Sunday. Can you check for me? And this is Lori. First of all, Happy New Year. How are you? Um, can you check to see? I just was getting ready to do.